Kratos, a Greek demigod born from Zeus and a mortal woman, was once a revered Spartan general who pledged himself to Ares to win a losing battle. After being thrown in a prison by the Furies, powerful beings were neither Titan nor God, who ultimately served to punish those who would dare to break a blood oath, Kratos was captured and chained. But Kratos soon broke free, for he eventually fought against one of the Hecatonkri's giant hands or honestly arms, speculating the length of the arm to be something like a conservative 500 feet, Kratos repeatedly slams this, and I mean ballpark, 250,000 pound or near 114,000 kilogram armored creature all over the place. He even flips over a massive stone block, complete with buildings in the process, adding on another estimated 20 million pounds or over 9 million kilograms to the total. We also see Kratos overpower one of Electo's giant tanks that are strong enough to easily fling a 37 meter or average 100,000 pound or 45 kilogram trireme warship hundreds of yards as Kratos dives into the water and downright smacks these tentacles away, hitching a ride on the Fury before smashing her through a pillar. He's punched a chain around the Titan Atlas's arm, hurling the 1,600 meter tall Titan or the height of nearly four and a quarter Empire State Buildings who in some iterations is said to weigh an estimated 1 billion 410 million pounds or 640 million kilograms with his arm if it weighs the average 5.7% of his body mass, like most adult males, would mean that the weight of Alice's arm that Kratos just sent flying weighs something like 80 million pounds or 36 and a half million kilograms. Later doing the same thing with the entire Colossus of Rhodes, and he even manages to break free from being crushed by Alice and much later Kronos, as Kratos catches Kronos' hand and pushes back against the Titan. So it makes sense that Kratos was able to impel a giant Hydra, leg presses 400 ton statues as a warm up, and after obtaining and opening Pandora's box, Kratos himself, who currently stands at 2.34 meters or 7 feet 8 inches, grew to match the enormous size of Ares' god form, or otherwise an estimated 500 feet or 152 meters tall, overpowering and beating the god of war and combat, who has thousands of years of fighting experience and skill under his belt. And Kratos even kills death. In the original series, Kratos died twice and also fell thousands upon tens of thousands of feet or meters, take your pick, into the underworld, smacking into the river Styx. That from a high velocity impact like this, where Kratos is absolutely hitting a terminal velocity of near 200 kilometers or 120 miles per hour would be just like slamming into a solid surface, splattering Kratos apart. But he survives this and gets into an epic tug of war with Hades. After being completely weakened from the river and nearly having his soul stolen from a surprise attack, while well, Hades himself has the strength to toss around Titans and stole the soul of Kronos. Kratos can easily jump the distance of something like 15 meters or 50 feet from a standing star which means that proportionally, his running jump could be somewhere around 60 meters or near 200 feet. Kratos is so durable that he can survive and quickly heal from having his throat slashed, being slammed through stone walls, or having the power of an erupting volcano blasting him out of its crater, sending him flying through a stone building of the nearby city of Atlantis, with the force of the volcano sinking the city. But hey, it's just another Friday. Upon reaching Pandora's temple on the back of Kronos, Kratos, with his godly stamina, free climbed the side of the temple for three days straight. He constantly stops himself during epic free falls by stabbing his blades into rock or whatever he can that would easily be enough force to rip anyone else's arms right off. Kratos is often able to react and strike his opponents so fast that hardly any of them can dodge it. We see him catapult boulders that go from something like 0 to 100 miles or 160 kilometers an hour in a couple seconds, reaching out and attaching himself to them. Over the years, Kratos has become so adept at using practically any weapon that there isn't many swords, spears, or punching gloves that he hasn't and can't master in a short time. In his possession, Kratos holds the Blades of Chaos that were crafted in the depths of the underworld by the smith god Hephaestus inside the Furnace of Hades. The blades were imbued with primordial fire, one of the elemental forces that existed at the dawn of creation, a powerful and a 
destructive force, which allows the blades to ignite into scolding flames with every attack. This allows the blades to cut, melt, and move fluidly in a circular manner through practically anything by the wielder. The chains of the blades were permanently seared onto Kratos' forearms and were only removed after Ares' death, being replaced by the Blades of Athena and then upgraded to the Blades of Exile. Although the Blades of Chaos seem to be bound to Kratos and follow him all the way to Norway even after throwing them away in Greece, Kratos also for a time held Poseidon's trident that allowed him to breathe underwater, Hades' soul-stealing blades, the ancient Golden Fleece, whose magic allows him to block and redirect any projectile and yet another annoying counterattack among many. He has a freakishly massive hammer, magic spear, he has often manipulated space and time slowing time down or just traveling through it to summon an army of titans. This is all along with him likely having mastered the boxing and wrestling art known as Pancration. And at one time, he possessed the wings of Icarus that allowed him to practically fly, he's been torpedoed through Poseidon, and has been stated to possibly be able to support the weight of the Earth's crust like Atlas, if not a bit more. However, Kratos eventually receives the all-powerful Blade of Olympus, magically forged from the heavens, the seas, the afterlife, and the earth. That shoots laser beams and can kill pretty much any god or otherwise, especially via impalement, mostly. Kratos has full-on grabbed the tip of the blade, stopping it from impaling him, and on top of that, he has willingly impelled himself, cutting through his major thoracic aorta, inferior vena cava, intestine, stomach, likely pancreas, and the lower portion of his heart, but he survives this. But as powerful as Kratos is, he does have his limitations, his weaknesses. Just like my Google search history, including everything from artery diagrams to the more questionable how hot does a blade need to be to melt through human flesh, Kratos is quite vulnerable to a few specific criticisms. Firstly, we see throughout every game that Kratos suffers from a pretty severe psychological trauma surrounding his family. This is what sparks all of the games, and he's quite isolated from the rest of humanity, is prone to frequent nightmares and crippling visions, self-loathing and self-doubt that he struggles to overcome, that gods can and do exploit. And he also seems to be quite vulnerable to magic. And this is where anybody could perhaps obtain their one and only chance of striking a killing blow. But if none of this was very interesting, then I saved my most interesting fact for last. In the end, it seems that the only thing with the best chance of bringing Kratos down would have to be a very special one-shot weapon as we see Kratos practically heal from any damage, sometimes in a matter of seconds if he wills it so. A special weapon like the BFG. With us going over Doom Guy's absurd power and feats in this video, see you in the next one.